you guys. Hi, Avengers. Pierre Poiliev has made it clear that he would make cuts to all these investments. And they, they've talked about this in Toronto. Today, I'm going to be day drinking and smoking cigarettes in a public park at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. We're going to take a quick look at a video that randomly popped up on my YouTube feed, and I'm sure glad it did because while it's not groundbreaking, it's certainly fascinating. What you're about to see are outtakes from a creator named Jacob Effing Jones. As a YouTube creator myself, I couldn't help but be intrigued at how something like this, like what you're about to see right now, could become so popular. So let's just rip right into it and let Jacob's video explain the channel on its own. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be day drinking and smoking cigarettes in a public park at 3 p.m. in the afternoon on a rainy day, which I will admit I am quite excited to do because I frankly put want to day drink and smoke some cigarettes. I'm just feeling like having a drink today and uh, I want to smoke some cigarettes as well as I love my cigarettes and so as such I figured I should make a video of me doing that and so as such that's exactly what I'm doing today. So right off the bat, spoiler alert, this is basically what every video on Jacob's channel is about. It's always about what he's going to drink, what he's going to smoke, where he's going to do it, and when he's going to do it. I'm serious. This is the entire crux of what his channel is about. Stop sign. Decided. I probably shouldn't blow through a stop sign live on video. I don't want any incriminating evidence in this video or anything like that kind of thing, so... Could not blow through a stop sign in this video, but uh, you know, off video, eh, who knows? I might, do I do that? Do I not? Who knows? Kind of thing. I was a little bit distracting. I'm gonna go roll up my window, turn off my defrost though, and turn off my lights as well. And now, real quick, I'm gonna go and go take a piss in that porta john, and then after that, I think it's time for me to go ahead and uh, day drink and smoke cigarettes in a public park at. 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It's currently 3.10, so. So I really get a kick out of Jacob's ability to just carry a video with random talk. As you just saw right there, nothing that he was talking about in those two segments had any bearing on anything, but he has that gift of the gab. He's able to just carry content with mere talking and his energy. So let's keep looking at that energy as it continues to unfurl on the camera to day drink and smoke cigarettes in a public park. Of course, first off, I need my cigarettes and I need... Oh, it just thundered as well. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. So I need my seat, I need my cigarettes, and I need my drink. So I've got my cigarettes in my backpack that I have right here. I've got my chair right here. And I've got my drink in my Pontiac Aztec cooler right there. So let's go ahead and just grab that do real I quick. Go ahead and get a drink out, or do I want to get a smoke out first? I think first off, I'm going to show you guys the different options I have to smoke in today's video because I brought a couple different options with me. So the first option I have is some American Spirit Full Body Reds, which I think are going to combine pretty well with the drink that I have today. I also have some Seneca Full Flavored 120s, which I also think are going to combine pretty well with the drink I have with me today as well. And then I also have some Kazami tobacco from Japan along with my Kisaru pipe from Japan as well that I think I might have to puff on a little bit in today's video as well. I think I'm going to start with an American Spirit full body red though. I think that's what I'm going to start with, but, but I haven't even talked about what I'm going to be drinking today. So I need to go ahead and talk about that. At the time that I'm recording right now, Jacob has almost 465,000 subscribers. Think about that. 465 subscribers who are checking in on this specific content on the regular. This is incredible. Now, mind you, his channel has been around for eight years under different forms of content, but it seems like he really nailed it when he decided to zero in on this. I've left a link to Jacob's original video in the show notes, so be sure to check out the channel yourself. Personally, if you have any interest in starting your own YouTube channel, I figure you should be looking at this because I'm always intrigued at what kind of content resonates with people who would, like, Honestly, who would have ever thought something like this would take off, but it has. Personally, I think Jacob's got a bright future with that gift of the gab that I mentioned earlier, and he definitely has some keen curation skills, but hopefully he'll phase out the smokes and the booze eventually and move on to less destructive subject matter. What's great about featuring Jacob's video is that it serves as the perfect lead-in to our talk about why the latest liberal ad is doomed to fail. I'm going to show you how this liberal ad is destined for failure by some 
sizing it up to an advertisement from the private sector, which was also created by a Canadian, which happens to be Ryan Reynolds. So let's take a look at that ad before the liberal one, as it actually serves a purpose in this world and won't turn your stomach. So that is how you do an ad. That ad is missing a few elements that I got to ding it for. For instance, there wasn't really a specific call to action. It was very brand focused, but that's not a bad thing. I'm more of a fan of ads that blend all the elements of proper marketing, but that ad resonates. It's fun. It sticks with you. I was able to uh, remember it first thing this morning when I got up to include it in this video. And since we're on the topic of alcohol and random videos popping up on the feed, I just want to share this before we go into the uh, liberal commercial. I simply cannot believe what I saw in this. I'll roll it for you. Here we go. Where do you even begin with a video like that? The guy gets smoked by a goddamn bus, then gets up like nothing happened and goes right into the pub. Could you imagine getting into a fight with that guy, like giving him your best shot? Let's look at the best shot the Liberals' new campaign director had at running an ad. Not very impressive, but it is what it is, right? Here we go. When it comes to strengthening our public health care system, the Liberal team is fighting for you. After they secured vaccines to protect Canadians from COVID-19, they made investments to hire more family doctors and reduce wait lists. Now they're rolling out dental care and they're getting Pharmacare done to deliver free contraceptives and diabetes medications. Pierre Poilievre has made it clear that he would make cuts to all these investments, removing health care services from millions of Canadians. Canadians need progress, not cuts. We won't go back. There is so much I could say about this ad, but you know what? Instead of pointing out the many, many faults in it, I'm going to tag in Vashi Kapalos. Yes, Vashi is my tag team partner for this one. She's stepping into the ring and she's taking on Mark Holland. Let's go. In 2019, your party pledged in your election platform to, quote, make sure that every Canadian has access to a family doctor or primary health care team, improving the quality of care for the nearly 5 million Canadians who today lack access. According to the Canadian Medical Association Minister, today 6.5 million Canadians lack that very access. Why are you trying to get Canadians to give you credit for a situation that has worsened under your watch? Watch out. This is a storm that has not even yet begun. Vashi is only warming up. This is only her intro. What you're about to see is a brutal evisceration. She does not let up for a second. Just keep watching. This is absolutely merciless and savage. But what we're saying is... But that's not, that what, I'm, but that's not what I'm pre pre presenting to you, Minister. With all due respect, I'm not saying this is a uh, binary choice between cutting and not. Your party put out an ad asking Canadians to give them credit for the health care system that they are enduring right now. And I put to you, I don't know any Canadian who thinks that they have a level of access to that health care system that is anywhere near satisfactory that they should in turn be giving you credit for. But what I'm saying, this, is, this isn't about credit. I mean, I appreciate maybe that's how you're thinking about this. It's not how I think about it. I think about it in terms of well, progress and for? solutions. And I can tell you, I can tell you that what we're doing on dental care, on pharmacare, on school food, on the bilateral agreements, on interconnected data, and I could go There's so a much fundamental principle in the art of argumentation, and that is the moment you need to start explaining yourself, you've lost. Mark is simply not accepting the gravity of the situation. This ad that the liberals have put out 
has absolutely no appeal. They're, they've got nothing to sell. They are actually soliciting or attempting to solicit a congratulations. That is not what advertising is supposed to be about. You're supposed to present an offer. There's no offer here. All they're doing is asking people to give them a pat on the back. You know, I get it. COVID was a big deal. But it's being over for two, for two years, and you're, you are asking Canadians to give you credit for those improvements with this ad. No, Why else not, would you put out an you're ad? You're thinking about credit. I don't, I'm not interested in credit. I was, look, I was head of the Heart and Stroke Foundation. What's I've spent my for? entire life ad, advocating for the changes to our health system. I, you you're seem to be very fixated on credit. I'm not interested in credit. I'm interested in improving the system. You put out an ad and, asking and Canadians solutions? to support your party yeah. because of health care. But that's asking right, for credit. But Vashi, listen to me. But Ash. That's hilarious. <laughs> We've seen Mark Holland lose his shit in the past. It's nothing new, but you can see here, and I can tell you right now, I'm not going to play the whole interview, but it's far from over and Vashi's already got him on the ropes. Like when he's starting to say things like, listen, and interrupting her, he's gone. He's lost the argument. But then again, that's territory that Mark knows well. So, so I'm sure he's still well within his element. And now I'm going to present to you a video from the young man who had the responsibility of driving the garbage truck that was labeled with Trump's campaign sticker. I'm sure you might have seen this. This was the Trump campaign's rebuttal to Joe Biden referring to Trump supporters as garbage, which greatly backfired. The liberals need to sit down and watch more videos like these. These are the people who are the deciding factor. It's as simple as that. These are the people who change the direction of elections. If you can't break through to the person that you're about to see now, you're not winning an election. It's as simple as that. So sit back and watch. And if you're a liberal, this will explain to you right now why your agenda is not resonating, why you're tanking in the polls, and why you're not going to be back in power for a very long time. I've had a few people reach out, so I figured I'd jump on here and just let everybody know that was me driving President Trump's garbage truck. There's me with Vivek right there, but... I gotta say, it was an honor and a privilege to drive Garbage Force One. President Trump is just a normal, everyday guy. He hopped in, no problem. He looked at me, he said, give me one of these right here, and we don't have one of these, we have one of those. So I honked a couple times and he laughed. He said, how about we take this bad boy through McDonald's? And I said, sir, I don't think she'll fit in the drive-through. He said, it's all right, I used to work there. And he turned to me and he said something and I'm I'm getting chills just thinking about it. He said, this is really sticking it to Joe Biden. I said, yes, sir, it is. The liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.